This is the Yamaha YDS-150 digital saxophone, and it is Yamaha's first digital saxophone. Now, Yamaha characterizes this as a digital wind instrument, so I don't really know the difference between that and an electric wind instrument, but this is by far the most realistic feeling saxophone digital wind instrument to date so far. It works off of four AAA batteries and has an output for headphones, an auxiliary input, and a USB connection to power it or for MIDI controls. Up top, it has a pretty intuitive layout with a power button, volume controls, voice control, and a function button. And this instrument was made and released almost two years ago in September of 2020, around that date. And today I'm going to review it and let you know if you should get one. You know, maybe I should play that Mario Kart thing here. Not whatever. Let's start with four features directly from Yamaha's website. The first one being volume control. So this instrument has a volume range all the way from zero to 15 and it goes into OD or overdrive, which may distort the speaker a little bit. The website says it ranges from 20 to 120 decibels. I don't know exactly what that sounds like, but here's what it sounds like on one, five, 10, and 15 and with me playing full volume. So here's one. Here is five. Here is 10. And here is 15. So this instrument features an integrated bell acoustic system. So for me, I think that all that means is it responds very well to breath. It has a speaker and a pipe in here. All the condensation, if that zooms in, comes out of this pipe because it has to go somewhere. And basically this acoustic bell helps with the resonance of the instrument. Now, it doesn't resonate like an actual acoustic saxophone. Of course, this is a digital instrument, but I get what they're going for. So here's a clip of me doing a crescendo and a day crescendo just to give you an idea of the dynamic range. Here we go. And that brings me to feature number two, which is actually the mouthpiece. So this mouthpiece is actually, it looks like a Yamaha 4C mouthpiece, but if you zoom in here, it actually says DS for digital saxophone. So another interesting quirk is you can play this instrument without the mouthpiece on there. I mean, it's ah, pretty gross, but you can actually still do it. I don't know, just in case you forget your mouthpiece one day. So one more thing I will say about this mouthpiece and this instrument in general is that it actually does take a little bit of breath control to play. So if you actually play an instrument, particularly the saxophone, then you'll be at an advantage already uh, just picking it up and playing it out of the box. And so the third feature of this is a full scale sampling of professional saxophone players. So I don't know who these saxophone players are, but this instrument actually has 73 different instrument sounds and 53 saxophone voices. So one thing I do like about the instrument is if I put it on a soprano voice or a tenor voice, it actually defaults to B flat. And if I put it on an alto or Barry sax voice, it actually defaults to E flat. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry about it, but it is an interesting quirk. So everything is not in the same key. If I'm playing tunes, I actually have to transpose and do all of those good things. But anyway, here are some of the voices. This is A02 alto sax straight. Here is S03 Soprano Sax Jazzy. <laughs> I need to practice that song. Here is T06 Tenor Sax Funky.
That one was a little strange. Like if you hold the note long, it goes into this uh, growl feature. Anyway, here is B01, Barry Sax Pop. And let's do one more. This is C06 Sawtooth Lead. So you might have noticed that I was bending some of those notes. This instrument actually has an analog button right here next to the thumb rest that you can program to do a couple of things. It's set for pitch bend on most voices. And so that's what I was using. It's kind of like the same thing on an iwi. I actually prefer the iwi a little bit more. I have big hands and this is a little bit awkward to get to just honestly speaking, but hey, it works. And let's move on to feature number four, which is actually what I mentioned earlier is the actual key layout of this instrument. So I've had this uh, for a few days now and to be honest with you, it feels like I expected it to feel. It's a plastic instrument. It doesn't necessarily feel cheap, but when you're used to playing a saxophone where they are actually pushing down keys to cover pads, you're kind of used to that feel. So there's one more thing. With this being a digital instrument, there are obviously no overtones or false fingerings. And I never realized how much I rely on playing false fingerings until I was jamming out on a tune and I go to play my favorite one over A and nothing actually happened. So once again, if you're a saxophonist already and you're just picking this up, that's just something to take note of. Another feature of this is actually the app. So I've heard of a few people having trouble connecting it via Bluetooth from the instrument to whatever smartphone that they're using. But within the app, there's a couple of different things you can go in. You can go in and program your own fingerings. You can set sensitivity. You can actually do that on the instrument, but a lot of times on the app is better. As far as uh, breath sensitivity and all kinds of a myriad of other features within the app. I'm a pretty simple guy. I like to just take stuff out the box. I mean, you can call it lazy, simple, whatever. I just like to play the instrument and go on, and if there's any quirks, I'll deal with it then. But straight out the box, I mean, it is what it is, and the instrument works. And the final feature I'll go over is the actually pretty nice soft case that it comes with. It's a cylindrical shape. I could easily see myself putting this in an overhead bin. I wouldn't necessarily, you know, put it under the plane because your junk will probably be destroyed, but... It is what it is. It actually works for what it's worth. And then what you do is it actually has a diagram in here of how you're supposed to put the instrument in the case. Here, I'll put it in there nice and delicately. Zip this bad boy up. Do your two clips here. And then you're ready to throw it over your shoulder and walk off to the gig. Ha. So the real question is for everyone, should you buy it? And the answer is, it depends. So if you're already a saxophone player and you're just looking for something, you know, to play in an apartment or a practice tool where you can't play really loud, like I live here now and I can't play my saxophone at all because everybody will complain then sure, it's a great tool. It would also be great if you're looking for a, a digital MIDI controller, especially if you play the saxophone, you're already familiar with it, you don't have to learn anything new, then it's a, also a great tool for that. If you don't play the saxophone and you're trying to learn, I would not advise that you start on this. This has a retail price of over $1,000. You can find it online at Sweetwater or maybe Amazon if they ever stock it again for like 800 bucks. There's a pretty long waiting list, so you have to subscribe to their mailing list and all this other stuff. But regardless, if you're a new saxophone player and you're just learning, I would advise you just to add you know, some more money to that, what you already have, and get a reliable student model saxophone because there's so many nuances that you need to learn with actually the mouthpiece and overtones and embouchure development and all those good things that you can't really achieve on here. But once again, if you play saxophone and you're just looking for uh, something to play at your house, this is great. I personally couldn't ever see myself playing this on a gig. 
It does do one thing I don't do though, and that is play perfectly in tune. Anyway, there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, and subscribe for more, and I will see you on the next one. Out.